Well, good evening, good evening. Let's get started. Let's go in the word of prayer. Father, we thank you now for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, your love, your compassion, and your care. Pray, Lord, you should continue to bless us as you always have. Speak to our hearts, give us ears to hear, heart to believe, and a word to say to your people. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, good evening, everybody. We thank God for you. Uh, good to see you. St. Paul folk and our guests that are with us this evening. We've been looking at evangelism um, this week and we're going to talk on it a little bit tonight. Um, tonight we're going to be looking at evangelism expressed by good works. We talked about expressing God's goodness this morning is a form of evangelism. Also when you do good works it also can be an expression of evangelism. So let's look tonight. Our first scripture tonight is Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. I want to say good evening to everybody. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Here we are. It said, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Neither do men set a light Set a, do the men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, the text is telling us very plainly. Remember, he just said earlier about you being salt. So now the text says, thank you, there you go, Matthew 5, 14 to 16, Evangelist to good works. So now he, he, he not only talks about being salt, now he talks about us as believers being light. Now that is a reference or really a reflection of Christ. Remember Christ said, he, the Bible talks about God is light, Christ is the light. So we are a reflection of Christ. So he said, you are the light. Christ is saying to the believers, you're the light, you're the one that's shining. Uh, in this world. You are the light of the world. The world cannot see if we as believers don't express God's light. What the scripture says about man, man loveth darkness because what? His deeds are evil. So if man is going to see and going to see who? See God, it need light. And the only light that man has is believers. Uh, and what he says now, if we're the light, we can't be hid. A light shines for the purpose to show, to, to magnify, to glorify. He said, when a man light a candle, he don't take that candle and hide it. You don't shine so you can hide. Um, you don't uh, express it. You, you, don't, you don't show God's glory so you can hide God's glory. No, you shine so you can show God's glory. That's why he said, let your light so shine. You allow the light that's in you to shine. What? So people can see your good works. When they see it, they won't give you glory, but they glorify the Father. See, when men see the glory, the, 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 the works that are the good works that we do as a believer, it don't give us or people glory. It give God's glory because man know what's in man. Man is inherently evil. Matter of fact, without the Holy Spirit, we don't know what we'll do. But it's because God restrains us and keep us and guides us and directs us. That's how we able to control ourselves and not do things we want to do sometimes or, 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 you know. So it's the light of God that shines in the believer. That's why he said, let it shine. Now, if we don't let our light shine, you know what? Then our flesh will be seen. It won't be good work seen. It'll be other work seen. People won't see the goodness of God if we don't allow the light of God to be shown and seen within us. So it's the light. It's, it's, it's God's light that we want to show people. Not who we are. Not what we are. But what's in us. Uh, now, understand this. People are not impressed with stuff when it comes to God. People don't see things and see God. People see good works, meaning care and concern in the work of God. Not, not 
how big a prison house is, not how much money someone has, not what car they drive. That doesn't impress people when they need help. They want to see what part of God in you. How are you showing them God? How are you showing them the Christ likeness in you? Because when Christ walked the earth and Christ did good works, Christ wasn't impressing people by showing them he had all power in heaven or, or if he wanted to, he can ride on chariots. If he wanted to, you know, he can live in a big house. No, 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 no. Bible said huh, Christ came to his own, his own didn't receive him. Why? Because it's the way he came to them. He didn't come to them like they wanted him to come to them. He didn't come to them riding on the chair, which he could. Matter of fact, when he went into Jerusalem, he rode on a donkey. Matter of fact, the, the foal of a donkey, a, a, a baby donkey. That's the lowest you can go. So he didn't go in riding big and ride high. He, he, he didn't come to earth living in a palace. Not that he couldn't because he owned the world. But the Bible said foxes have holes. Birds of air have nests. Son of man have nowhere to lay his head. So he wasn't coming to earth to impress people with things. That does not show the light of Christ. We cannot show people Christ by showing them things. But it's good works. It's good works. It's it's the works that God put in us because we're doing, Christ said, I do the works that my father do. So we're doing what Christ has done and that shows people the light of God that is shining us. He said, when you, when people see those good works, they don't give you no glory because they know it's not you, but it's God. They give God glory. And isn't that wonderful that people recognize when they see God working in you, they know who it is working. We should be thankful and grateful that when people see God working, they know it's not us. But they give the right one the glory. They give God the glory. Amen. So we let our light shine because when we, we let our light shine, people see these good works and they give the right one. They give God the glory. Now, as believers, we have no excuse. Amen. Look at Romans 2. Romans 2, 6-8. In fact, mankind have no excuse with all the advances and, and the opportunities that God has given. Man, Romans 2, 6 through 8. Romans chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. Watch what it says. Who will render to every man according to his deed? God. To them who by patient continuance and well, and well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. But to them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. So, man, kind, we believers and those that have an opportunity to be believers have no excuse. Because God is going to render every man, what? According to their deeds. By the words you be justified, by your words you be condemned. God is going to pay a man for what he does, right? Right? Revelation says when Christ come back, he's going to have his reward with him. He's going to have his reward with him. To pay every man so. So there's no excuse. If we're not doing the work of Christ, there's nobody to, to blame for that but us. If, if we're not doing uh, what God has called us to do when it comes to being um, a workman for God, doing God's work, doing good works according to what God expects of us, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. When we have opportunity, the Bible said, do unto man as we have opportunity. And it don't make sense to have uh, the world's good and keep it all to ourselves. We have opportunity with, to do good to all men, the Bible said. What did the man do? The, you, you remember we talked about this a few days ago. Man had a great harvest. And when he had the great harvest, he said, I'm going to build me bigger barns. Bigger barns? Not born, but barns. He had so much that he had too much to put in his big barn. And rather than being a blessing to somebody else, he's going to build me some bigger barns. I got too much for me, but rather than helping somebody, rather than being a blessing to somebody, 
I'm just going to store it all up. I'm not concerned about good works and, and, and what God is looking for and what the Bible says. The Bible said, the Lord said, thou fool, tonight your soul is required. And whom shall this stuff be? Isn't that, isn't that amazing that we think that what we have, we're always going to have it? I've shared this more than one time. Most of us understand this. Whatever we have, one day it's going to leave us or we're going to leave it. Rich and ruler ran to Jesus said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, you know the scripture, you know the, the commandments. He said, all those have I kept from my youth. The Bible said Jesus loved him. He said to him, go thy way. Sell what thou have. Give to the poor. Come follow me and see treasures in heaven. The Bible said man dropped his head, walked away sad. And disciples were amazed. They said, well, who can be saved? They thought because if you gave much, you had much. If you had much, every other you was right with God. He said what's impossible with man was possible with God. The man was holding on to what he had so much that he didn't want to turn it loose just to get Jesus just to accept Christ because he loved what he had more than he loved God brothers and sisters let us not be guilty of that of covetousness of greed of selfishness when we show Christ Jesus to this world when we show good works to this world we are showing people the God in us because we're naturally selfish we're naturally you know naturally it's easy to be about us but when we are doing what God wants us to do and be about our brothers and our sisters, then are we doing not the natural, but the supernatural. And that's how God works. We let this light shine because we have no excuse. God is going to render every man according to his deeds, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Now let's be careful because we don't want to have worthless works. Look at Matthew, Matthew chapter 23. Because you can't have works that's worth nothing. Matthew 23, 1 through 5. Matthew chapter 23 verses 1 through 5 Matthew 23 says verse 1 through 5 then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples saying the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses seat all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe they'll observe and do but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulder. But they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do, for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries, enlarge their borders, enlarge the borders of their garments. So the scribes and Pharisees who were the leaders in that day, he said, they said, Moses, they, they're the leaders. They're just like Moses. They're leading the people. He says, now, observe what they say do and do it. But don't do after their work. It's like I've heard somebody say, somebody said, do as I say, but not as I do. Because they say one thing, but they do something else. For the Lord said, fifth verse, all their works, they do what? To be seen. They do to be seen. Whatever they do, he said they're doing it to be seen. So that's worthless. If the only thing you're doing is working to be seen, that means nothing to God. Matter of fact, the Bible says when you sound a trumpet, you have your reward. 
That's why people, you got to be careful. You know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, folk doing stuff and posting it online and telling folk about it. If, if you're doing it to be seen, you already got your reward. You know, if you're doing something from your heart, you don't have to tell everybody, I loan the money, pay the light. But if you loan it to them, that's between you and them. If you gave it to them, whatever it is, whatever you're doing from your heart, you shouldn't have to do it for sure. That's right. You, when you're doing it from your heart, it's not for sure. It's because you're doing it from your heart. It's the love of God in you. You're doing it big, and, and this is this is always my stand. I I never try to loan people, or give people nothing I can't afford to do. That way, if I lose it, it won't hurt so bad. Although you want it back, but you don't have to tell nobody. But here's the thing: as a workman for Christ, doing good works for God, we don't do what we do to be seen by people. We, we don't need man's approval. What we do, because if we're doing it from our heart, we know where our reward comes from. Those things we do in secret, the Bible says, God reward us openly. Don't need man. Don't need man's approval. Don't need man's praise because God see it. And if God see and God know, that's all that counts. That means more than anything the world could say. Why do we need to be pat on the back and all this kind of stuff to, for man to see? Need bright lights, need picture, we need video. Won't, won't everybody see, you know? And then some people have nerves say, well, the church ain't doing nothing. You don't know what the church doing. The church don't have to broadcast everything it does. The church don't do everything to be seen. The church should operate the way Christ operated because it is Christ's body. That's what the body of Christ does. Good works to please God. Because doing the works, Christ said, I'm doing the works of my father. I'm doing what I see my father do. That's what the church is doing. What it see the Lord do. Not worthless work. Yeah, if it wasn't for me, uh, they, 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 they wouldn't have had, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to pay their mortgage. Lord have mercy. I had to I had to bail him out again. And believe it or not, people are like that. People are like that. And that's a shame. Shame on you if that's you. Shame on you that you want God's glory. Shame on you if you want God's glory. Because if you're doing good works, the works are not for you, but it's that you would please God. And he to get the glory. Let your light so shine in me and see your good works and glorify God. He deserved the glory. So if he used you, praise God. Praise God. But it's not, it's not you. It's not you. Sometimes we think and believe because God has blessed us with only one bless. But God could use who he chooses. So be careful. Be careful. We have to have the mind. Look, look with me in Acts, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, 36 to 42. Acts 9, 36 to 42. Because some folk works are worthless, while some people works huh, are so heavy that they are worthy. They have great worthy works. You know, you can do so good that people hate to see you die. Lord, I can say that one more time. You can do such great works, such good works for God and for God's people that people would hate to even see you die. Not leave, not stay home for a week, but to see you die. Let me show you, Acts 9. Acts 9, 36 to 42. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which was which by interpretation is called Darkus. This woman is full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. For as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent to him two men desiring him. He would not delay to come to them. Peter rose and went with them, when he was come, they brought to him the up, brought him into the upper chamber, and all the windows, widows stood by him weeping, 
and showing their coats and garments which darkness made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turned to him and the body of Tabitha rose and said, oh, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up and he gave, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up when he called the saints and widows presented her alive, it was known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord. Tabitha or Darkus was such a woman of good works that the Bible says that when she died, they called for Peter. Not to do the funeral, but they didn't, want to, they didn't want to accept that she was dead. Lord have mercy. The woman the Bible said was full. This is what the text said. She was full of good work and alms. Alms means mean she was a giving person. Uh, money meant nothing. She was a giving person. She had the gift of giving. And, and she had good work. She was a helper. She, she made coats and things. She took care of the widows. Made them clothes and and made them coats for the winner. She took care of the less fortunate. Then not say if she was married. One like she wasn't. Then said about her husband there. Evidently she wasn't an old person. Because she took care of those older. Or those widows. But when she got sick. Because. Of the type of person she was. A given person. A person of good works. A person that cared for people, a person that took, made clothes for people, uh, made coats for people, because of her good works, they heard about Peter was close, and rather than preparing her for burial, <laughs> they prepared her to meet Peter. They washed and laid up there so when Peter would come, Peter would do a great work for them. They just could not accept that she was dead. They knew she was dead, but they didn't want to accept it. Ain't that so? They knew she was dead, but they refused to accept it because of who she was. Because of her good works. And her good works showed and proved that it wasn't about her, but it's about God. Because the text, look what the text said. The text says... After that, many believed in the Lord. When they saw what Peter done for her, they believed in the Lord. But why? What? How did this all this happen? Because she was such a classy woman? No. Because she had money? No. Uh, because she was just a she was known as a Christian? No. But because she had good works, and she was a giving person, and because of that. Her death was not accepted. They didn't want to hear it. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't accept it. And they had to send for some help. We may need to ask ourselves. Is what we do in the body of Christ? I'm not talking about the church. I'm not talking about in the building. Because we're not even there right now. What we do for the body of Christ. Does it mean enough? To people that they would miss us, it would bother them because we're gone, because of the good works that we're doing for Christ. Or will we be known as a good sister, a good brother, a preacher? Whatever? How will we be known? What would be our legacy? We got here. Would it really bother folk that we go? Will somebody say, Well, thank God? God called another one home. Great works affected people so much they did not want to accept what happened and will happen to all of us. My brothers and sisters, that really should make us think because we don't want to have worthless works and no excuse not to work but we want to have works enough good works enough that people will know what we're about people will know what we're about not think they know 
but they will know. We're about. Let's stay in Acts. Let's stay in Acts. Acts 13. Paul and Barnabas, most of us know about God, calling them to do great work. But I want you to see more so, um, not just because they were preachers, they were apostles, but there was more than that. Look at Acts 13. Acts 13, 2 and 3. Acts 13, 2 and 3 says... And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, laid their hands on them, sent them away. That's when they sent them away on their missionary journey the first time. Remember, they went twice. Oh, they got to it the second time. But that work was the missionary journey that God was place them together for to go out and do a great work for him they preached they taught they did great things but they were more than preachers they were more than teachers they were more than apostles see titles are one thing but work is something else let me say that one more time titles are one thing but work is something else now turn over to, with me to the 11th chapter and I want you to see Acts 11, 27 through 30. Acts 11, 27 through 30 says, And in these days came the prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, who signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dirt throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. When disciples, every man according to then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So now, remember the 13th chapter, they're going to be sent out to do a great work, missionary work, uh, preaching and teaching, spread the gospel. But before God sent them out to do a great work, and pat them together, guess what? They was already doing a great work. Why? Because when the prophet Agabus came and said, look, there's going to be a great dirt, there's going to be a great hunger, um, and everybody believed that he was a prophet. And see, that's the difference between today and back then. Back then, when a prophet spoke, everybody knew he was a prophet, and it happened like he said during the time of Claudius Caesar. And when everybody knew what was going to happen, what they began to do was they began to gather together relief from everywhere they could, gather together relief. And when they gathered together, they sent it by who? Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas. The same one that God going to use to send out later, they're working now. Listen, brothers and sisters, you don't need a title to work. You need to get to work. If there's work that needs to be done, you need to get to work. When they saw that there was a need to do, and now this was no preaching engagement. This was carrying relief, carrying money, carrying food. Whatever it was they were sent to those Judea, they were carrying it to those that needed help. That's a good work. Most of the time, people are not interested in that because there's no, you know, there's no, there's nothing behind it. People not, you know, lifting you up. People not, you know, bragging about you and, and people not, you know, um, putting your name on high. This was just as important as what they did in the 13th chapter. Matter of fact, it seemed to me that God saw they was working already and he decided to use them even more. Maybe God ain't using some of us because we ain't doing nothing now. But they was working before they got the call by the Holy Spirit that they would go out and do missionary work. But the only work folk want to do nowadays, they want to be seen. Want to be, you know, and look what 12 and 25 says. 12, Matthew 12, 12 and 2, I mean, Acts 12 25 says, And the Barnabas saw returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname is Mark. So when they took what they were supposed to take to Jerusalem, they came back to Antioch. And the Bible said, When they finished or fulfilled their ministry, Good works, helping people, doing what you're supposed to do when it comes to being a blessing to people, that is ministry. But for some reason, we don't see that as ministry. 
We don't understand that the Lord done ministry more so on the outside of the church more than he done in the church. And that's what they done. They done ministry before they was called to do ministry. Lord, I wish somebody hear me this evening. Before they were called to go out and preach and teach and do ministry, they was already doing ministry. Rather than wait until you need your name um, on high, start doing ministry now. Lord, help us to see. Let, let me share one more scripture with you. We'll, we'll leave this alone. Lord, I thank you. First Peter 2 and 12. First Peter 2 and 12. Amen. Sister Marie, good works is ministry. That's the key. Good works is ministry. First Peter 2 and 12 says this, have your conversation honest among the Gentiles, where they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. <laughs> you know what Peter's saying? He's saying, have your conversation honest, meaning your lifestyle, the way you live among them, Honest, you know, the Gentiles when they when they speak, because I don't care how you live, whether it's good or bad, the world loves its own, so they always gonna say something bad about believers, which are, is the church of the living God. He says, but now, because of your honest conversation, because of your lifestyle, because of your behavior, he says, and they speak of his evil, they gonna see what good works. They're going to see them how? Because we're going to be doing. They shall behold your good works and glorify God. Their visitation, not just when he returned, but when he deal with them. Whether it's through repentance or discipline, it's the good works. It's, 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 it's what... <sighs> We as believers do that when the world see them, they can't deny them. No matter what they said, no matter how they feel about you, when they see Christ working in you, they see you doing what God has called you to do, the Bible says they give God the glory. They give God the glory. Even though they may have said, you're no good. She thinks she's something. He's not right. When they see your conduct, the way you carry yourself, they see the work you're doing, are good works for God. They must recognize and give the right person the glory because they know who it is working within. Brothers and sisters, if we're going to be the church that God is calling for and evangelize this world to evangelism, we must do the works that he sent us to do. And that's good works. That's the kind of works that Christ did when he was here. Good works. Works that please God. Works that people see and they know is not for man but only from God. And when they recognize it's God working in you, they give him glory because of the works. Because our duty, our goal, our responsibility is to please him that sent us to do the work. Please God. So brothers and sisters, one form of evangelism is good works. When people see good works, not for show, because when you're doing good works for show, you already have your reward. But when you're doing them from your heart, people see them, people know them, 
people recognize them and they give God glory because of it. And it don't take much. It don't take much. You don't have to do great things or, or what you would call great things in, in the eyes of man to do the works of Christ. But do those things you know would be pleasing to God. And most of the time, we know that because if it's natural to us, normally that's not what God wants us to do because God wants us to work in the supernatural. That's the way God wants us to work, in the supernatural. What does that mean? That means sometimes we find ourselves going against our flesh, going against our will, going against what we desire, going against what we want to try to be a blessing to somebody else, to try to be a help to someone else. And that's what pleased God. What did the Lord say? What did the Lord say? Fourth chapter of John. The Bible said when they went to town and got something to eat, they came back and saw Jesus talking with this woman. Nobody wanted to ask him anything. And they said, Jesus, eat. He said, my meat and my drink is to do the works of him that sent me. They said, have anybody gave anything to me? Anything to eat? He said, no, anybody. His, his, his work, the work he had to do was to do what God called him to do. To win souls, to share the gospel, to, to talk to people, to let people. Matter of fact, Jesus said one day to him, said, if you don't believe what I say, believe what I do. Because the only Bible some people have is you. You. You know the Bible some people have? Some people won't never read the Bible. But if they see you, and if they can see Christ in you, they can see the light of Christ shine in you, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. God bless you. May God keep you. Let us pray for you. Father, we do ask you now that you continue to work a work in us that we cannot do for ourselves. We pray, Lord, you continue to be merciful, continue to be kind, continue to lead and guide us, protect us, and do for us, Lord, because we need you now in a mean and trying world. Well, Lord, we don't know which way to go. The only way we're going now is to be and be only. But, Lord, help us to share this truth that you share with us. To, so, Lord God, to perform this evangelism so the world can see you. And Lord, we know when the world see you, it's far better than the world seeing us. So we thank you. We praise you for this opportunity to come to thee this evening. So bless your church, bless St. Paul, and all those that are listening. Bless them, Lord God, with ears to hear and hearts to believe. And allow them to show their good works that you will be glorified and that your church will be edified. We thank you, Master. It's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray. God bless you. May God keep you. This is our prayer. Amen. See you guys in the morning for Morning Man at 745.